What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay mini to rescue. Today we're going to look at probably the largest single model I have ever rescued. If you haven't guessed by now, this is a Warhammer 40k Mars Pattern Warlord Titan. This thing weighs almost 20 pounds when it's fully put together and stands at about two feet tall. This was sent in by Josh, AKA Huna Soldier, and he had had this painted originally by a friend of his, but asked if I would give it a refresh, kind of redo the paneling, add some other things to the body, and just kind of freshen it up in some new colors that, that he liked. After stripping everything from all the paneling, I did two coats of this black surface primer from Vallejo, and I let it sit for probably two days after I did the, the first coat and then the second coat. And that was just to make sure that this primer was solidified and hard because we're eventually going to be doing some stenciling and we don't want any of that primer to come off. And Vallejo surface primer is known for coming off when you're using stencils if you haven't waited long enough. Starting off with Burnt Umber as our base coat, I'm gonna go over a majority of the panels to set us up for the two main colors that we're gonna be using for the majority of this project. And for the most part, we're gonna be switching back and forth between Burnt Umber and a couple of other colors so that we can build everything up nice and slow and then weather that with the same Burnt Umber later. Now bringing in our first major color in duck egg green, we're gonna mix this into the pot with a little bit of that burnt umber and that's gonna just give us the next step up to building up this green so that it sticks nicely and it looks nice and vibrant. With the pure duck egg green, we're gonna go over that entire portion of that panel, and you'll see it sticks really nicely. I'm blowing pretty much mostly air out of the airbrush at this point, and it's almost covering on the first pass. Now, I still have to go back and do a couple of passes just to make sure that there isn't any spotting or anything weird going on, but it sticks nicely, and it looks really nice over that base coat. Using Vallejo's pale green, I'm just going to create a little bit of variation in that duck egg green, mostly in the shadows, and eventually we're going to come back with the burnt umber and some more duck egg green, and a lot of that's going to get covered up. But anywhere that it doesn't get covered up leaves a little bit of variation and just some character to each panel. Bringing in our second major color for the model, this is going to be Vallejo's Aged White. And this is a really nice off-white that pairs nicely with kind of a more pastel color palette. So this duck egg green plays really well off of this off-white, and they look really nice together. I should also mention that this white in particular, and in general with most whites, you need to thin them down a little bit more than you would out of the bottle through an airbrush. So even for this airbrush ready off-white, which should shoot mostly okay, I still had to thin it down with a few drops of Flow Improver, and partially that helps reduce tip drying, which happens with really bright pigments, but whites in particular have issues going through an airbrush. With Vallejo's Steel, 
I'm going to do all the trim on all of the panels. So trim in general on models is pretty much the most tedious thing that you can do when you're painting because you have to be precise. You don't want to mess anything up and get, you know, silver, gold, whatever color on your fresh airbrush job. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there's no easy way to do trim. You know, if I was going to airbrush this, I'd have to tape everything off and that would take just as much time. And in some cases, I, I was able to use the airbrush in some of the larger metallic areas and it looks nice that way. But for the most part, when you're doing it, you just got to throw on a TV show or a podcast or whatever and just get down with your brush and finish the trim. After what felt like literally days of doing trim, it was time to break out that burnt umber again and start working on a little bit of the weathering. I decided that I wanted to show different steps of the process and, you know, kind of where I was at with each thing. And this is the test that I did with one of the panels for the weathering. And it turned out the way that I liked it, so I ended up using this on the rest of the panels. So pretty much, I went in pretty heavy with the burnt umber and kind of panel lined everything. You know, the Sotar brush that I'm using, uh, it's the 2022F, has a really fine tip on it. So you're able to get a really small spray pattern and kind of localize it in exactly the places that you want it. So doing this kind of lining like this was really easy with this airbrush. And I know I couldn't have done it with, you know, something with a bigger needle. Since I like the way that this was turning out so far, I thought I'd finish the rest of the panel and put on that white. And again, because it's a pretty fine needle, I was able to get pretty close to the edge of that green without overspraying almost at all. And even then, the plan was to come back with the duck egg green to cover up any overspray and make that burnt umber just a little bit thinner around all of those panel sections. But what I found with a majority of the panels that I did is that I didn't actually end up having to go back because there wasn't really any overspray. And that saves a lot of time when you're doing a project like this. It's so big, you're trying to get so much done. If you have the right tool for the job, then it's going to make it a lot easier. And I was very happy to have this brush at this time. And I'm planning on doing a full in-depth review of this airbrush, especially compared to the one I've been using for so long. So hopefully I can get that out in the next, you know, month or so. So check that out when it comes up. Oh look, it's burnt umber, again! But you know what, this is kind of necessary. When you're airbrushing, you have to go back and forth quite often with colors. And in this case, I added the burnt umber into that, what was left of the white in the pot after finishing those pieces of panels, so that 
you know, I could just come back and start doing that light weathering over the white and it would mix nicely. And honestly, because the brown is so brown, it's almost, you can't even tell that there's any white in it. So like I mentioned earlier, I was gonna come back in with some of these colors and clean up those panels and kind of minimize that burnt umber just a little bit and make those lines a little bit smaller when in any areas that they kind of either got too big or went out of control. And this works really well because it's almost like a pre-shade for that color. So when you come back in under some of this weathering, you can still kind of see that that color's tinted because you're basically glazing it on and it cleans it up nicely, but still leaves a little bit of that weathering in because we didn't want too much weathering on this Titan. So it's just enough to give you the sense that it's been outside for a little while. Switching things up, we're gonna do some metal fatigue on the large guns that hang off of the body of the Titan. So using gold yellow and a little bit of burnt umber, we're gonna darken that yellow down and start to glaze that on to, I guess about halfway down the barrel. I also wanted to show this process on a smaller gun and mostly that's just so I can fit it in the frame entirely because the other one's just really big. Now coming in with red terracotta, I'm gonna mix this with Vallejo Flow Improver quite a bit to kind of make that into a lot thinner glaze and then just slowly build that red up about halfway down where that yellow started. And there are a couple of reasons for this. Mainly it's because when you're using straight acrylic colors to do this, you're not really getting thin enough to have that metallic look show through. And that's, you know, it's a stylistic choice if you want it to look like that. There are other products out there, inks and different things. I think Secret Weapons sells a specific set for doing this that works really well. So there are kind of multiple ways to do it. This is just the way that I like to do it and the supplies that I personally own. So reeling back a little bit with Xerius Purple, we're gonna do exactly the same thing halfway up in a, a really light glaze just to get that purple to mix with the red and that silver. With electric blue, we're pretty much gonna take care of just the tip of the guns. And that's to give us that real nice bright finish where that, that heat is coming out more often. And especially on the big gun, I'm gonna bring that back just a little bit on some of the smaller details just to give a little more sense that there's heat in other areas. Maybe, you know, things are flowing through or they're being pulled in. However this gun works, you know, you're, you're just kind of blending that blue in with the purple in a few different varieties so that it looks like different areas of the end of the barrel are just getting really hot. And lastly, we're gonna come in with metallic black from Vallejo and just kind of char the tips, but because it's metallic, it's gonna give us a little bit of that shine. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much how you do this for pretty much any gun you want. And like I said earlier, there are multiple ways to do it. This is just the way that I like to do it. And if you have another way that you personally like to, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. So I found these really awesome stencils at fallouthobbies.com. This isn't sponsored in any way, I just bought this product on a whim and really, really liked it. Pretty much, this stuff is like a semi-sticky, non-permanent vinyl. So you can put it on and pull it off and reuse it on other pieces after that top paint has dried. So I found this really, really useful for this project. Because it's vinyl, it's pretty strong and it's also soft at the same time. So pushing it into these corners and really getting that coverage and making sure that when I put paint on, it's only gonna go through these holes and nowhere else. It's not gonna bleed through, you know, and we're using the airbrush, so that, that kind of helps that, mitigates the, the kind of paint flow, I guess. But it went on nicely and it came off nicely. 
and because it already kind of had this indentation, I was able to match that up on the other panel in pretty much the exact same way. So they look identical with opposite colors. And in case you forgot, we're using burnt umber to weather these panels. So I'm gonna start here on these. I did all the rivets and that's just to create cohesion between all of them and to give a slight weathering to this really bright metal. And the idea behind that was that, you know, this had only been in a few different battles, but it'd been outside a little bit. So it's not too weathered, but you know, there might be some water streaking and some other things. So I'm gonna start the panels here and then we're gonna take it to the next level with another product. AK Interactive's Streaking Grime is a very good way to weather in a few different methods. So it's an enamel wash that can be mixed down with either enamel thinners or mineral spirits. Personally, I prefer odorless mineral spirits because you're not getting that strong smell of chemicals the entire time you're working with it. And it kind of reacts a little bit differently than a normal thinner. It doesn't necessarily cut down the pigment as much. It makes it flow a little nicer. And after putting on a, a, a varnish, a gloss varnish, you can streak this down and come back with mineral spirits and kind of clean that up a little bit. And it leaves a stain on the front of whatever you're doing and it just looks really nice it's it can be heavy and it can be subtle you can mix it however you want so you, there's a lot of control with a wash like this and it acts a lot like an oil wash would in many cases I wanted to show exactly how I was using this so I mixed up a couple different batches, uh, some a little bit stronger and some a little lighter. And after it dried, I came back in with that odorless mineral spirit and streaking up from the bottom. It's kind of removing the center of that color and leaving, you know, that water streak look to everything. Works really well. So because of the scope of this project, I thought I was going to have to break this video up into at least two parts. But when it came down to it, I was pretty much doing the same things over and over. So I thought I would just show some key things that I was doing, like the weathering and you know how I was working up these colors and using the stencils, right? And I thought that that showed just enough of what was going on to give you kind of a picture and a few different items and techniques that you know you might be able to take away and use for your own projects thank you again josh for letting me work on your amazing titan it was a real pleasure and i enjoyed every second of it and without you i don't think i would have ever been able to work on something like this In order to take semi-proper pictures of this model, I had to set this on my pool table with two folding chairs and a black blanket and two studio lights pointed at this thing. Not exactly the round table that I normally get to use for the tiny models. So this is the best I could do with what I had. And man, it looks insane. 
and especially in person, when I put these next to these other models, you can start to see the scale of what's actually going on here. It's, it's fantastic in person. Thank you again, Josh. I really hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoy your Titan for a long time to come. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. If you're still here, thank you for sticking it through to the end, or mostly the end. I'm going to let this roll for a little bit longer, just showing some different angles and some other things. A lot of people have requested that, you know, I leave the end product up a little bit longer so you can kind of see it from as many angles as I could get. So again, thank you for sticking around. Oh, and in case you're wondering, all of these panels have been stuck on with non-permanent glue dots and they're kind of fallen off in a couple places toward the end of when I was taking these, these videos and photos. So it's not 100% perfectly stuck on there. Um, I wanted to leave that up, you know, to uh, Josh to glue and put together when he got it back through the mail. Because mailing this as one piece, I would not do that. that. That would be a bad idea. So if you're wondering, that's what's going on, that kind of middle panels sideways a little bit. It's no big deal. Worked out really well and all of it came right off. So kind of a bonus. All right. Thanks again for sticking around. I will see you later.